Hey guys, video nine for the Salvation Series. I wanna kind of make a stretch of videos that covers doctrines that would attack the doctrine of salvation, uh, be it workspace or being it Calvinism, which attacks it being a free choice and man's free will to choose to get saved. And I wanna start with Calvinism. I wanna refute all five points of Calvinism. See, some people, I've heard people say I'm a one-pointer or I'm a two-pointer. I'm a no-pointer. I believe all five points of Calvinism are uh, rank heresy and that it actually does way more harm and many people damns their soul to hell. And I truly believe if someone is a hardcore Calvinist, or at least they believe in all five points of Calvinism, then they are not saved. And I'm going to go over why I believe that is. But I want to start with, as I usually do, my clear statement on why Calvinism is heresy and that it's wrong. And that's Romans 10, chapter 10, verse 13. It says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now, for those of you who don't know, Calvinism states that you don't choose to be saved. It's not a choice of your own. There's no condition for getting saved, that God wills who he will save and he wills who he will damn. So when you are born, you will you are either chosen or uh, to go to heaven or you are chosen to go to hell. Uh, there's going to be little people or there's going to be people that change little wording and use some weird ma word magic here and there, but the gist is the same across the board and that it's he either wills you to go to heaven or he wills you to go to hell. And they believe because God's sovereign and because of God's, because that God's in control, he chooses he, who he will save and who he will not. But this verse obviously completely negates that when it says for whosoever, that's anybody, whosoever, if it were for only certain people, it said for the ones I chose, for them that shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's how the verse would read if Calvinism were true. But it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, meaning they have the ability in and of themselves to call upon the Lord, to choose life rather than death, to choose the Messiah, to choose Jesus Christ. And that's for anybody. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And the last book in the Bible, chapter 22 in the book of Revelation, in verse 17 says this, and the spirit and the bride say, come, meaning they're inviting. They're saying, come and let them that heareth, that's anybody, that's whosoever will say, come and let him that is a thirst come. Do you see the, uh, the wideness, the all inclusiveness, who, who, who it's including anybody, whoever's a thirst, whoever wants it, come and whosoever will. That's anybody. And it shows that they have the will to do it. Let him take of the water of life freely. It's not being forced. It's a free gift. And it's for everybody. Whosoever will, let him come and take of the water of life freely. Eternal life is a free gift. And God, in his sovereignty, did not rig it. He didn't stack the deck. He didn't force people to get saved. Or he didn't... Uh, choose who he was going to save and who he was going to throw in hell. Now, God has foreknowledge. Does he know who will be saved? Absolutely. Does he know who will go to hell? Absolutely. But he gives you the choice. And this verse is very clear that it's free. And him that's a thirst, let him come and take of the water of life freely. We're going to start with these videos on all five points of tulip, total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement. Um, uh, what's the... Uh, the irresistible grace and the perseverance of the saints. I believe all five points are heresy, and we're going to do a video series refuting that.